Joe Walton Stadium. Each hash mark is a milestone. Each yard is a memory. The Robert Morris University football program is young, ready to adapt, change, advance. Each white line marks another stride, but sometimes the lines that create a football program are repainted. John Banizak has been a familiar face to the team. This year, two words precede his name, head coach. Banizak has an impressive football life. Three Super Bowl rings with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a stint in the USFL, an impressive coaching career at Washington and Jefferson. When he began coaching the Colonials in 2003, there was no turning back. You young guys! Uh, you know what, I, I, because I had some experience prior to this being a head coach, um, it really wasn't that much of a transition. Obviously, you know, everything, I'm responsible for everything in, in, in the program. With a gritty sandpaper voice, Coach Banizak runs a high-intensity camp with very little stops, and nothing is ever good enough. Corey, I would think you'd get in the playbook and understand this and work it, okay? You're not giving me any indication that you want to do this. I'm pretty intense, demanding, um, and, and I have to be. Um, you know, I set the bar pretty high for myself because I, I, I want to win. I want our kids to win. I want our kids to be rewarded for all their effort. And, and the reward is to win. First year offensive coordinator, Darren Hicks, is at the forefront of an RMU offensive revolution. The Colonials are moving to a faster, more aggressive spread offense. And we track daily how many plays we, we run per day. Uh, right now we're averaging 207 snaps a day offensively. So we're really trying to, to push the tempo in, in every day. And, and, and I tell the guys all the time, I, you get to a point, it's almost like a breaking point in, in that. And, and you, you kind of come to the, to the Y in the road and you can either take that, you know, that easy path and be able to go away with it or you know, take the, the right side of the path, which kind of breaks you through. And I think our guys have done that. And you know, I don't think there's any turning back now. Well, we're yeah, backed up at the, at the bathroom? Yeah, a little bit. Unless you want me to cross the street. Whatever it takes. Let's line up and be ready to go here. Goodness gracious. And welcome to the documentary today, guys. You're in. Bring your A game. Sounds good. Yeah, no pressure. National Geographic. No pressure. A game, though. So far, I think we have four guys that, that could be a starter for us at any time during the season. You know, each one of these guys brings a, a lot to the table. Uh, they're all very intelligent. Uh, they, they really understand what we're trying to do. Luke Brumbaugh has got tremendous presence in the pocket. Derek Abbott is a guy that's got a lot of moxie out there, uh, is a guy that, that can definitely uh, take command. Marcus Prather is a guy that, that's won, you know, he's won here before, you know, and has come from a, from a big time high school program. Uh, you know, he's a winner in, in that way. And Joe Carroll is a guy that's so smooth. And, and I tell him he's got ice in his veins when he's out there. He never gets too high and he never gets too low. I, I feel extremely blessed to, to be able to coach those four guys on a daily basis. But no matter who is throwing the ball, there will be at least one player always ready to catch it. I wasn't worried. Huh? Oreos and Mills would be pretty good. Think about it. Don't even say you don't like Oreos. It's all about secrecy, okay? If I tell nobody the mic is on, then they get around me, they, they're themselves. You tell them you have a mic, they're like... Dwayne Mitchell hopes to continue his success from last season. Last year on the gridiron, he earned all NEC honors and broke the program record for single season receptions with 52. I, I started football because I was always in trouble. Never listened to teachers, didn't listen to my parents, and, and, and football gave me that guidance I needed. And now I play it just honestly to clear my mind. When I step on the field, nothing else matters at all. It's just football, hitting somebody. Getting my plays right, you know, catching the ball. I love that. Scoring a touchdown is one of the most amazing feelings. You can, you can debate till till 
So you can't debate it anymore. They're going to call. Yeah, I know they are. They're going to call. So. I kind of just sound like he was like, yeah, bro. Dwayne Mitchell is a, a great kid. He's a great leader. He's been around this program for a long, long time. In, in terms of bringing in young guys, talking to them, making sure they know how hard they have to work, making sure, you know, our ideals as players, he does a great job. Um, and he's a very, very talented player. Just, just lean by example, showing them the way, you know, in, in meetings, pointing out certain things and, you know, just being active and learning with them, not just telling them what to do, just learning this new offense and learning inside. Good catch. By the second scrimmage, the image of the Colonial's main field general is coming into focus. Brumbaugh receives the most reps. Abbott follows close behind. Um, <laughs> I, it kind of is what it is. I, mean, uh, I think we're all very capable of, uh, of running this offense uh, well and winning football games. Um, I think it's been going well. Um, and whoever they pick to, uh, to, uh, to be the starter for EKU and going forward, would, uh, I think it's going to be the right decision. Um, I think it's great because um, we're a close-knit group. Um, we're not um, fighting against each other. It's more encouraging against each other, and whoever plays, like, is, we know is going to be the best that plays. So um, we're a very close group, and it, it's a good situation. It's a lot better than um, situations you see uh, other places. So. Hey, Ryan. Ryan, you ain't got no hands, cuz. None. No, you're supposed to catch it. Should. We got to score today. We got to show them that you have a heart attack when we can come resurrect you. You got to make it there first. That's a problem. We got to get a pick at like the 10 yard line. Or that's what we need to do. We need to get a pick and we'll carry it to the 10 and give it to you. And you'll come act out of breath and I'll come in and do that. And he does clear and then you get resurrected and come up. Yeah, you got to bounce with it. You got to be smooth with it. <laughs> All right. The real Stallone got the top with steroids. Yeah, but not, not Rocky. Oh, no, not Rocky. Rocky's an American hero. <laughs> Cheater. American hero. Oh, wait, wait. Hey, Rod. Let's see the line, though. Let's see the deal. Oh, ho, oh. ho! Get your mind right, baby. Get your mind right. Coming out banging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming out banging. This right here, 621, Robert Moore's best duo cornerback. In the flesh. But we're going to show it. Hey. This is a practice under lights. What? It's a hardcore practice under lights. Is that what you need? Pretty much. Hardcore practice under lights. With refs that don't call anything. Go ahead and go over Coach B. I'm sure if you suggest it, obviously it'll happen. I'm just saying, that's what this is to me right now. <laughs> Except for when I get cougar, then this sh gets real out here.
Redshirt senior John Hill is chief of the offensive line. He and the rest of the linemen will need to endure the newer, faster offensive scheme. Our new offense is very, uh, very fast-paced. So it was a lot. I, one of the biggest things was the conditioning. We uh, conditioning was a lot, a lot harder, a lot more difficult, a lot, a lot more strenuous to kind of get us ready for this uh, this fast-paced offense that we run. When it wasn't too hard of a transition, and the offense is definitely built for for the offensive line to not have to overthink. So. We've, uh, we've more enjoyed it. Right here. Here we go. Here we go. Good. That's it. Fine. Good, John. Here we go. Left side. Up. An offensive line is funny because the more they're with each other and the more they hang out together and, and the harder they work on the field, uh, there's more continuity between them. You know, and, and they can trust each other and they can trust the guy next to them and, and already know what he's going to do before the play snap. So I think that it, it just takes time to build to build that continuity within the group. We get along great. I mean, I've, I've lived with all different kinds of people. This is my fifth year, so I've been living with all, you know, a bunch of people. But this is my, you know, my first year living with, uh, living with my old line boys. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think you'll find a closer group on the team, honestly. I don't know how you speak it most of the day. It's a car. I'm starving. Car. Starving. Car. Starving. Starving. There you go. What are you getting angry? Right what do you mean? They teach you me how to brother. speak English. Bro, but you, all right, man. I don't know how you speak in here in Pittsburgh. It's a car. Like I don't see. I don't see the you problem. Say you're I'm driving saying. your car to the bar. I'm driving my car to the bar. 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 No, yeah, bar. No. It's a bar. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Dude was like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 79 years old. And he's like, oh, you want to live to see 80? He's like, oh, ha, ha. That was funny. I don't think I would have opened with it, but it was funny. Come here. You can't stay here. Good. Don't make a move. You can't be here. You can go wherever you want. As soon as he says hut, you attack. Oh, get his ass. Drive him back. Move your feet. Oh, you have been <laughs> David would have been buried there. That's hey, right. Yo, that's right. Go, go, go. You got him. You got him. I, I got Joe. Go, go, go. Go again. Go again. If you complain about your knee hurting later, I'm going to get that film for you jumping in the air. No, it's good now. No bull rush. Go. Good punch. Make him work, Z. Head back. Head back, Corey. Don't get too far up. Don't get too far up field. Keep moving. Keep your feet moving. Good, two new, two new, let's go, let's go. Here, here. For, for us, we want to aim. We want to aim right at his hip. Coach, I think you should just, you should just demonstrate. You should demonstrate? I think you should just. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we go, here we go. Oh. <laughs> give it up, give it up. That was the worst cut ever. All right, here we go. Come on, let's go. What would be outside if you can't get that in the What would be the best way to get it? So if I can't get here and you punch me here and I can't get to you, smack it and rip it. Bring it because this one is already clear. That is so he can that's why they said that you can't get to it. Bring it right here. 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 Quarterback candidate Prather exchanges the red jersey for a white and moves to a receiver position. Um, I had mentioned it to Coach Hicks early on, probably a week into camp. I went in and met with him and talked about it a little bit. And uh, I didn't really make the switch until the day after our second scrimmage. I went and talked with Coach Shep and uh, he was all for it. You know, he was excited. You know, I just wanted to help him out. You know, he gave me a shot, so you know, that's what I'm doing now. Um, you know, I still want to play quarterback, that's why I came here, but I, you know, I didn't think that opportunity was going to come early on in the season, you know, 
maybe it'll come down the line. But I just want to do anything to get on the field, anything to help the team. And I want to take a chance to play receiver. I thought I could help the receiving core, you know, try to get on the field in another way.
Kennedy. Woo! You just carry that plate around. Quarterback. Quarterback. Yo, I got bent line against Root. Oh. Hey, hey, Go Root! Hey, get him, Root! 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 Freshman defensive lineman Cody Roop and freshman tight end Ben Line are finding their place in the college football landscape. The biggest thing is just the speed of the game. It's, it's a lot quicker. You have to learn stuff like this, and there's a ton of meetings. Um, high school, we just have practice, and you go home and for the day, and that'd be it. But in college, you have practice, and then eight meetings, and practice, and then 20 more meetings, and then you have to wake up the next morning and do it all again. And it's uh, our high school coach was a big time, just pound the ball, just like. Big time work hard yeah, kind of thing. New offense. And uh, but here it's a lot more mental. I mean, a lot more meetings. You got to memorize a lot more stuff. I mean, the physical stuff. We have that. We have that mindset set. But Every t anytime we go anywhere, people automatically assume that we're brothers, or they tell us that we're attached to the hip because we're never more than 20 feet away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Probably get a house together. <laughs> a mansion, we'll have the A wing, I'll <laughs> have the B wing. The defensive side of the ball has some building to do as well. After losing Mike Cook and Kyle Cooper to graduation, the defense looks to a new leader. Well, we have we have young guys. We're um, you know they're, they're going to have to play this year. Um, you know we're 
as as in prior camps, you know, we're really slowing things down and um, doing more walkthroughs, and um, you know, so these young guys have an opportunity to be ready to play in the first game. Um, you know, we'll where it really hurts us is we'll fill um, our holes. Um, you know, as every team does every year um, when, when situations arise. Um, the only difference is um, as far as the depth is, is where um, it may hurt us this year. But that's when it comes into like communication, alerting people, letting people know when people are tight, when people are offset, or when people are in close stances that they normally never get in. That's why when we go up and do stunts, you heard me the other day talking to Lanza, if I'm in a general stance here, and then all of a sudden I get this long gated stance, they automatically know that I'm gonna try to twist, right? Yeah. So you know that <coughs> normally if they're here, you're fine, okay? I start doing this, you gotta know something is up. Okay. That one, you kind of went out here and it cut back inside of you, right? All you gotta do is come up to here and expect them to go outside and you want them to force them inside. Oh, Des! No! <laughs> hey, that's why you wear gloves, Des. Voice hand. Voice hand. I got my real voice hand. Yo, jeez. I'm sitting there when Coach B's talking on like a third day camp, and a B got me right here. Where am I? Eyeball? No, right here. I was sitting there and Coach P was talking and I'm just like, Duh. I was like, yo! <laughs> Put it like a little baby bee because it was a little, little singer. It's because I smell nice, you know, they all come out. Mike Stockvic, we've, we've moved inside, um, who uh, was actually got injured last year after the third game of the season. Um, so we'll move him inside. Then we also have Jimmy Mason, um, who's a, uh, who played last year all on special teams. Um, is a kid that will will come in and, and compete for um, those spots in the middle. You know, last year uh, I was new. Um, I didn't know everything. Uh, Kyle Cooper lined me up pretty much every play. I mean, I knew whether I was blitzing or I was in man or we were in zone, but he would tell me, like, you know, the more complex stuff, tell me what I needed to do. Um, I think Coop was more of a vocal guy, and Cook was a guy that, you know, really led by example. and. I'm trying to do both those things in one, but I mean, I got Jake Tack next to me, and you know, he's not as vocal, but you know, he leads by example and does the right things and whatnot. Come on, shit. Kansas, Kansas, the last year, we got speed everywhere D line, linebackers, um, safeties. Um, you know, I think we're bigger and faster, more athletic, and it's not a you know, knock on the guys last year, but I think we've had better recruiting classes. Um, and I think, I also think with Coach B taking over, he's instilled a more of a, you know, like a dog mentality where we're all hungry, you know? And it's like Coach Ferrison said, he wants us flying the football and making plays, so that's what we're trying to do. Y'all question. Y'all want to win a championship, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know how to do that, huh? Yeah. Hey, it's easy to turn it on in game day. It's easy. It's about you can, whether you can turn it on every day during practice. That's when you win a championship. All right? Let's go. Let's dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Come out. No BS. Let's get after it. All right, let's go. Bring it up. Come out strong. Let's come out strong. Three's on two. Three's on two. One, two. Three. Let me know when everybody's had a chance to defend twice. Set, go! I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. You're off tomorrow. No, we're not. There's no practice, there's no nothing on. Yeah, but there's a meeting. Do we at least get breakfast tomorrow? Or are we Did you get a uh, continental breakfast? No, I don't want that continental thing anymore. Uh -uh. I saw the way that went last time. It didn't go very well. Uh, even the juice is warm, so I didn't want to do that.
go. There he is. I'm sure. Tighten it down. You have any old Billy left? Tighten it down. We have some short meetings tonight. It's important scrimmage tomorrow. And the best thing that you can do is to make the coaches have tough decisions. We love having tough decisions. Okay. Um, and the best way you can do that is if you're prepared mentally, physically to perform in the scrimmages. Okay. That is our evaluation period, and it's and it's very very important. Teddy came out swagged out. You know, you're having an interview after this. You hear me, Teddy? You came out here with all the gear on, knowing you're going to get an interview after. Interview. You know, you always on TV, bro. Antoine Eddy, or Teddy, as he's known by the team, has an impressive resume to justify his position as this year's team captain. Coming into the season, he has 79 tackles, five interceptions, and nine pass breakups to his name. Last season brought national recognition on multiple levels. He was third nationally and first in the NEC in punt returns with 15 yards of return. An All-American punt returner from the Sports Network, all NEC honors as a return specialist and defensive back. This year, he's already a preseason All-American. Antoine does his thing. You know, Teddy, as we call him, um, he's a hard worker. He's, he's, he's a quiet leader on this team. He, he doesn't, you know, talk a lot. He, um, he wows people with his play. <laughs> My senior year, uh, it's sad, but at the same time, it's exciting. Uh, just coming in, doing my four years, and coming in from my freshman year to what I became is exciting, but just leaving the team, and this is my last year of college football, is sad about, I'm sad about that. Just coming off of all the preseason All-American, I'm planning on making All-American again this year. Uh, obviously, NEC, All-NEC. Uh, I believe David Taylor. Uh, coming in as a freshman, he reminded me of myself and 
I seen the path that he was headed down, so I took him under my wing and just showed him basically, he was basically my freshman Teddy. And I'm a senior, so I, I basically took him under my wing and showed him right and wrong. And we now the bond that we have is crazy. Why do you play football? Football. I play football because of my grandma. Uh, she told me back then, like I don't even remember, but she told me that I did promise her I was going to the NFL. So, I mean, hey, my chances are looking kind of good right now, and I'm making my family proud, so I don't stop. There aren't a whole lot of people that think we can pull this off. Okay, already I've had a few phone call and said, and reporters say you guys are underdogs. Okay, we're underdogs. Been an underdog all my life. Underdogs fight a little bit harder. Underdogs work a little bit harder. Under, underdogs out hit people, out tough people. Okay? That's how underdogs win. By killing all of those. Alright? I love the role. I think it's awesome. Okay? There's nobody, just think, outside of us. And this is B. Okay? I think we can pull this off. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Coach Coach B. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bring it down, Coach B. Over the hill. Birthday present I can have is beating Eastern. Let's go. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Yeah. Offense. I'm ready to fucking ball out. I don't know about y'all, but I'm 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 so hyped I got this fucking jersey. I swear I felt like Christmas when I woke up this morning. You can't ask for nothing better than this. Football Thursday night, big ass crowd, new uniforms, the weather's perfect. I I don't want to be anywhere else. I wouldn't rather be anywhere else than right here with y'all. Let's go, man. Underdogs. We talked about that Sunday. I love that role. I've been an underdog all my life. And I still am. Okay? I still am. Underdogs fight harder. I'm gonna fight hard tonight. I'm gonna work hard out there to see us if, if we can somehow pull this thing off as underdogs. It's a great opportunity for us. I don't believe that they think that we're good enough to be there. And watching them and talking to their coach, okay, this is just a little bump in the highway for them. Come up here. Let's show them 
okay, what colonial football is all about. Let's get after them. By any means, out hit them. By any means, out work them. By any means, out fight them. I told you guys yesterday, make them beat you playing your best. Leave it all on the field, fella. Leave it all out there. Let's go get them. Excellent protection, downfield intercepted at the goal line. Nick Lamica, number eight in blue with the pick. Hits the intended receiver, breaks two tackles. He has an open lane, 10, five. He will dive to the pylon, touchdown, Colonels. A simple play to Jeff Glover. Miscommunication there, intercepted by David Taylor. On the outside, 40 at the 35, he's gonna go out of bounds at the 32. All right, you feel me? We're gonna get that pressure, we're gonna get some more turnovers. Hey, all right? Okay. And it is good, Army on the board for the first time in 2014, seven to three. McLean takes it off the read option at the five yard line wide, open and touchdown, Colonels. That certainly woke up the crowd at Joe Walton Stadium. Cameron Sutherland with the huge hit. And then we'll say he made the catch. Kemka on the reception. And they're about half a yard short, and that will bring the Colonels back onto the offense. Across his body to Mitchell, jump ball, he comes down with it, and that's a first down rubber board. Go, dude, come on, baby! Let's go! We can play! Through the uprights, it's good. Eastern Kentucky 20, Robert Morris 3. Rombaugh has time, the line, great protection goes downfield. Gavin looking for the pass. Does he make the catch? He comes down with it at the 40. First down, Robert Morris. We have a fumble on the play. We'll see what the referee's call is. He stops play, and they have not motioned towards Robert Morris just yet.
Line drive, it's up and it's good. 23-3. Fumble on the play. And the Colonials might get another lucky break. Freeze on the ends for this quarterback to keep it. Okay? Let the inside guys do their job, outside guys do yours. All right? Tony, deep downfield, picked off by Robert Morris. Making moves left and right. It will get down to inside the 40 yard line. Into the end zone, touchdown Robert Morris. That's Ramsey Zowitz, first collegiate touchdown, first touchdown of the year for the Colonials. Right into the fourth quarter. We took the game into the fourth quarter. Okay? You understand? I your elder football. We're only going to get better. You understand that? Everybody, we are going to get We're going to be a better football team before this is all said and done. Do not leave your head. Let's go see the alma mater. The RMU football team stands on shaky legs, but it stands nonetheless. Legs that run, legs that kick, legs that line up one next to another. A new foundation bent on not giving up. Success isn't always measured by wins and losses. Do you trust the guy who lines up next to you? The guys who call the plays? Not just on the field, but rather in life situations. The Colonials would go on to finish the season one in 10. Try, fail, try, fail. The only thing left to do is try again. The key to success is to push and shove over and over again until the goal is achieved. Success is equated to heart and work, the ability to strengthen as a team, the willingness and drive to improve by any means. <laughs> Hey, that's why you wear gloves, Des. Hail to RMU. <laughs>